Hello and welcome, Phil FPV here again. Just another little battery tip. What I'm going to do today is we're going to be replacing a cell in a LiPo. Because I don't know about you guys, but they're pretty expensive and I find it very hard to chuck away a battery unless it's completely done in. And this one's not even that old, as you can see, it's a couple of months old. And cell number one has basically died on me. I was flying, a, well, I was in a race, a minute into the race, and the quad just dropped to the ground. I was like, okay, went and retrieved it, checked the battery, and cell number one was on about one, two volts, I think, something like that. And I checked it again this morning, and it is now on zero volts. Lucky enough, I have a spare cell because about a month or so ago I ate a tree with one of these and it was brand new <laughs> unlucky yeah brand new and I damaged one of these cells here like it was almost like a pyramid this top cell so what I done is I took it apart kept the other three cells and I've already used one cell fixing one battery which is this one here which works pretty sweet I must say so I'm gonna try again with this one so basically stuff you will need I made up this clever little box here which is a shoe box with two PC fans some duct in which goes to the window up there so I'm not gonna breathe in all the nice solder multimeter Stanley blade or a pair of scissors whatever you want to use to cut it open go careful when you're cutting it open though because you can damn you can cut into the cell if you cut along this side or along this side. I recommend cutting down here or down here because there's a metal little metal shield thin plate behind there and on this side as well to stop you from damaging it when you're flying around. So I would cut off from this side or this side. And obviously you're gonna need a soldering iron. And uh, I like to use the little sucker, the solder remover I'm not sure if it's got a proper name but if it has leave it in the comments let me know and a pair of snips and a pair of pliers and a little battery meter for afterwards so now we just need to strip this one down desolder cell number one solder in the new one and we should be good to go right Right, so here we are, all taken apart now, there's all the bits and bobs, the covers, the metal shields. So now what we need to do is remove this solder and this solder. I'm going to do this side first, I'll try to do this side first. Right, so there we go. One bad cell. Put that one on there. And a new one down here. And now we just need to put it on there like that. Gonna wrap a bit of tape around it just to hold it in place. Right. So basically just sold that bad thing. Now, if we check the voltage, hooray! Fourteen point four, thirteen. Okay. So I will have to obviously rebalance them. Lucky enough, I've made a little lead up to do that because you never know when you may have a battery which is slightly out of balance <coughs> so 
Sorry about the little jump cut there, but here we are, all wrapped up. <coughs> I just put a bit of white gaffer tape around the outside, and then I just wrap the top all the way around the top and bottom with a bit of insulation tape. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a bit of a cough at the moment. So, here we go. So number one is wave. Right, so here we are. All finished wrapping it up now. All wrapped, all done. And there's a Trinogy internal resistance meter. And cell number one is a little bit higher than the rest. 5.4, 4.5, 5.1, 4.8, 17 overall. That's pretty, pretty good. It's not too bad. We just need to bring down the voltage of cell number one to the same as the rest. And the way you do that is you will have to make up a special lead to do it. And what I will show you that now. Let me just unplug this. You need a little bit of 18 or 20 gauge AWG silicone wire. 20 should be okay, but I just used 18 is because what I had at the time. Then you're going to need a servo plug with the two male pins. Hopefully you can see that. I'll see red goes in the middle and the black one on the outside. And then what you do is you plug it into your main lead, your XT60 on your balance on your charger. You set it to one cell, and then on D charge, obviously not charge, because we want to bring it down. If you want to, if you needed to bring it up, you'd put it on charge one cell. But what I would do is put it on charge, D charge. Um, I might be able to show you that now, actually. Give me a second. just about reach right basically it was cell number one so cell number one starts from negative so for cell number one you would use them two for cell number two them two cell number three them two and cell number four them two always keeping the live and the negative round the same way. Hopefully you can see it. So cell one, cell two, cell three, cell four. So what we need to do is put the camera on the tripod, stick it in there like so, set the charger to discharge on one cell, do it at about 0.3 of an amp and you should be good to go just make sure you keep it on the charger because you don't want to decharge it too much 